to the second show of Our Schools, Our Future. We will have rotating school committee members to bring forth to you some of the wonderful and exciting things happening in our school system. Hopefully we can educate you going forward. Um, my name is Dan Elias. I am the vice chair, and this is Catherine Young, chairperson of the Pittsfield School Committee, and she will introduce our wonderful guest tonight. Thank you, Dan. It's my pleasure to be with you again today in Our Schools, Our Future. And today we're going to take up a very interesting topic. And again, part of our mission here is to educate you, the public, about what goes on in the Pittsfield Public Schools, the challenges that we face, the successes, the many successes that we see, but how we rise to those challenges as well. And we have with us today three very interesting guests. We have Dr. Jason McCandless, Superintendent of Schools. We have Shirley Edgerton, who is the Cultural Proficiency Liaison for the Pittsfield Public School District, a very unique position, I might add. Yes. And we have Marie Richardson, who is a caseworker at Taconic High School. And I think when we talk about cultural proficiency and cultural competency, Shirley, you know, maybe you can tell us a little bit about where we're coming from and why we would need such mm -hmm. a position as the Cultural Proficiency Liaison. Okay. All right, I guess maybe we could start by defining what cultural competence sure. is. Um, and the definition that we use is it's the ability to identify and challenge one's own cultural assumptions, values, and beliefs. It is about developing empathy and connected knowledge, the ability to see the world through another's eyes, or at least the very least, to recognize that others may view the world through different cultural lenses. Wow. Yeah. What strikes me in that definition is the ability to see the world through another's eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, when I think of that as a former English teacher, when mm -hmm. you're teaching literature and you're teaching, you meet many characters and you try to understand what's mm -hmm. going on in that character's head. Right. And that's so important, I think, absolutely. to understand the world through another's yeah. eyes. We get so caught up in, our, in mm -hmm. ourselves sometimes, that's difficult to do. Yeah. Very important, yeah. Yeah, and it's an enriching experience as an educator you mm -hmm. know, to be able to understand the experiences that our children, you know, have had and to utilize that information uh, in teaching, you know. Uh, it's also an opportunity to celebrate or for all of us to celebrate our different cultures and our different experiences. Uh, it's a great way also of, of helping our students to, to be comfortable if there's uh, some representation on some level about the culture or the culture that they come from. Yeah, you know, when you mention celebrate, mm -hmm. that's really an interesting word because I think we came from, a, oh, years ago it was always, you must learn tolerance. Mm -hmm. You must learn to tolerate other cultures. Right. And Absolutely. other cultures, yeah. I think, would like more than tolerance. Mm -hmm. They would like you to understand why they too should be celebrated. Yeah. Very Excellent. interesting. Excellent point. Yeah, oh. point about the words. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. So we have this cultural definition of cultural competence and what it is, and we have to explain this to our students, to our faculty. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are your roles in doing that in the Pittsfield Public Schools? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about okay. our roles. Well, we've right been too. really excited this year. We've gone into a lot of our elementary and middle schools, and we're actually booked up pretty <laughs> yeah. much through the year going into sure. all of the schools. and. We're not teaching cultural mm -hmm. competence. We're really having a conversation mm -hmm. with the faculty. And I've been really so impressed with how open and willing people have been le learning to like rethink. That's mm -hmm. all we're really asking, mm -hmm. right, is just think about things in a different way. And the definition that I have up on the screen now is people think, oh, <coughs> cultural competency, I have to know everything about everybody. You don't. It's just really about relationship building mm -hmm. and making connections and understanding who you are as a person and like be aware of your world views, you know, and, and to accept people as who come to the table, you know, and and that's really the important thing. And when we talk about cultural competence, it's really just being a good listener, um, expressing an interest in who's coming in your into your classroom or into our schools, um, you know, and just to be aware of your world views, you know, and, and also just to be consistent demonstration of trustworthiness. And those are the important things to be culturally competent, mm -hmm. right? Yep. 
Yeah, in full disclosure, I did attend the, uh, <laughs> or most of the presentation that you gave to the new teachers. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, mm -hmm. for people out there listening, this is something else that we do. We have a new teacher orientation, and what we're trying to do is to get our new teachers to understand this is the community we are, mm -hmm. and this is how we, we want to build those, those positive relationships with, mm -hmm. our, with our students. Mm -hmm. and, they, and again, as I said, I don't know. Do other districts have a cultural... No. <laughs> this is a very unique position. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's yeah. you know, and, and you mentioned, uh, you know, new teacher orientation. It's really, to, to us, this is a key piece. We talk about it in our interviews with people before they're hired. We want people that are coming to Pittsfield to serve children and families to know from from the first day that they are employed by us that this is important. The the. the you know, the old way of you assimilate and we will mm. tolerate mm. <laughs> is mm -hmm. just, you know, uh, as you said, you know, it's so much better to celebrate and, and to understand that there is real power in what America has created with all of these different cultures and, and ways of being. Mm -hmm. Being here together peacefully and learning from each other rather than, than one culture submitting to another. Um, it's really, you know, in a nutshell, this notion of understanding that my way is a way, but it's not the way, uh, is very powerful. And we're, we're very grateful to have, you know, this level of expertise uh, as evidenced by these two um, colleagues of ours um, to do this. And we really do. We want, we want people to understand from, from day one. Um, we have a, a, a team of, of teachers that meet uh, a couple of times a month that generated a, a question bank that we all use in our interviews to really get at our people coming in to employ here, or our potential people, you know, employees coming in with the attitudes necessary to embrace this because mm -hmm. it's really key to who we are. And I think it's key to our, our future success mm -hmm. uh, culturally, socially, and, and academically. Yeah, I found it fascinating to hear that the diversity team did come up with a set of questions mm -hmm. for interviewing that were culturally yes. competent questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think Pittsfield really, you know, stands ahead of the game here, and particularly when you look at what's going on in the national scene, mm -hmm. and you are hearing things that are so contrary to this, mm -hmm. so contradictory. I think we have to stand up for who we are mm -hmm. and teach our children right. that, that there are right ways and wrong ways to go, and I think mm -hmm. the key is building those, those relationships. Mm -hmm. When I used to teach prejudice, so to speak, we used mm -hmm. to teach so much through our literature, and the key was prejudice is based on fear. Mm -hmm. That's what it's built on. It is taught and it's based on fear. So if you build open positive relationships, mm -hmm. that fear breaks down. Yeah, and absolutely. then you're able to accept, tolerate, and celebrate, mm -hmm. I think. And that's why we think it's also important that we don't want um, people to feel guilty about anything, any experiences. The reality is all of us live in this world. You know, we're impacted by the media. We've all grown up in a family with certain beliefs. So the, it's, it's not that we are doing anything wrong. It's just we are uh, products of our society. And so this is, this, the cultural competence experience is an opportunity for us to be self-reflective and to kind of begin to dig into the biases that we may have developed because of our experiences. Mm -hmm. So we, we, Marie and I try to stress, you know, we're not trying to make anyone feel guilty. We don't want you to think somehow you're bad people or you, you're evil. It's just the opposite. You're human beings. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes I share my biases of, uh, you know, we won't talk about that now, you know, but, <laughs> but I, you know, I'm very open about, you know, biases that I'm conscious, you know, yeah. of, and so that's what we want um, uh, our, the educators to understand, that all of us have biases. They're unconscious. It has nothing to do with you being a bad person or evil person. It's just we're a product of our environment. We can recognize those, mm -hmm. you know, yes. when we're dealing with families. That's right. And I think a lot of the schools that we've gone into, we've had some wonderful, wonderful conversations. And I think about a paraprofessional that was at one of our schools mm -hmm. the other day that shared, and it, it's great through these conversations, you, you're comfortable to speak up, but she said, she's from Puerto Rico, and so many people come to her on Cinco de Mayo and mm -hmm. assume 
because she's Spanish speaking that she's and so I was so proud of her mm -hmm. to have the courage to stand up in front of her peers and say listen I don't celebrate Cinco de Mayo it's not my holiday and I think people need to recognize that and I think through having conversations like this in the schools it gives people the strength to speak up you know and I'm sure that's something that mm -hmm. probably bothered her every May 5th you know <laughs> and I think this was her time and I will bet in that school and they're all caring teachers mm -hmm. they will not go to her again this year you know so I think those are the positive things that happen mm -hmm. or when teachers fill out the evaluations at the end of the um, presentation and thank you for helping us just think about things differently mm -hmm. you know and it's if a teacher can leave with one or two things and that's what we ask on the evaluation can you just tell us one or two things that you found important or helpful and that they can find those things that they've learned and just the way they can change their thought process I think that's so important mm -hmm. yeah. What uh, potential, potential roadblocks do you see, some of the difficulties of, uh, that we will face in, mm -hmm. in, in meeting in this objective? The, well, I think um, our uh, ability to share this conversation has been made a little easier uh, because of the leadership in the system. So, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were talking about. That. Yeah. <laughs> so because <laughs> because the school committee and the superintendent is leading um, the way on this issue, mm -hmm. you know, you you heard Jake talk about the process and what type of staff and you know educators that um, he's looking for or, or we are looking for. So it makes it easier for us to come behind and say this is what we want you to think about. These are some tools for you to possibly make a mind shift if you need to. I mean, it doesn't, we don't necessarily have to assume that we don't already have some culturally proficient uh, educators in our system. But the, the challenge, I think, for us has been made a little easier. You know, um, but, but sitting in a room and having someone suggest that, you know, you, 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 might have to, you know, might be helpful to think about things a little different. Sometimes can be challenging for some individuals, you know, because people have become comfortable with who they are. They've become comfortable with their approach. So sometimes uh, when you bring up certain topics, it might trigger some thoughts. So I would, for I think for us, that's probably the most challenging piece. Is just sometimes there uh, might be some resistance, but I think because we're having a conversation and not a debate yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, talk about that. so it's right. you know it's we're just giving Good this point. information and we really try to provide information to the point of folks can be self-reflective after they leave that room you know and then there's some other ongoing things that will occur in the system so they will understand that this is not just a um, one conversation but the, it's, it's repetitive and people will have an opportunity to, to get it over and over again in different ways. Yeah, and just to make clear to our viewers as well, now you're doing work with the teachers, with mm -hmm. the staff. Yes. Now you're working with the kids as well. Well, we have, that's funny, we, we, we've been talking about that. We have different ways of working with the students. Like last year, for example, we initiated a book club in collaboration with the librarian at Taconic High School. Mm -hmm. And you know, you never know how things are gonna go with young people. <laughs> but we were surprised. The, the students, the, and what we did was, it, it was all young ladies uh, in this particular group. And they embraced the book. Um, they were consistent in terms of, of, of their attendance. And they even suggested to us that we start earlier next they year. We read the book uh, Brown Girl yeah. Dreaming. Do you know yeah. that book? Yeah. Oh, Kathy, you would yeah. love it. It is a great book growing up in the South. Well, actually, her life between North and South, but the, mm -hmm. the conflicts that she had to deal with. And it, it was wonderful. And we actually had some of the young ladies write um, their own poems about mm -hmm. what it feels like growing up a, a black girl. And, and some of them were, um, all yeah, of them were amazing. amazing. Yeah. But we have a few of them hanging up in my office and um, in the library. She put some of them in, in the publication that she does. And you're right. I mean, mm -hmm. the girls are already coming up. But we're, this year we're going to actually do a young men's book club. Yes. And we already mm -hmm. ordered the book. It's um, 
Between the World and Me. Have you read that book? Mm -hmm. It's on, it's right now. It's I think it's number one, the New York Seller Best List of, fi of Fiction Books, and it's yeah. um, it's very good. A father has written it to his son about the struggles of growing up black in this mm -hmm. world and and to protect your body, and you know what you have to do to kind of survive. And it's a lot around some of the the things that have happened. You know, well, and with some of the yeah, male students, very very good. Last that. year we had um, young men from our community who would come in and discuss different topics. So we, one young man uh, from Berkshire Works talked about soft skills that are needed in the interview process. Another came in and talked about uh, college, going to college, and what skills are, are needed and what that experience is like. So, um, so yes, so we did cultural competence, but it was in more of a creative way with the students, you know, not yeah. just the conversations. But conversations came up through the different readings or through the different guests that were brought into the schools. And we brought them to mm -hmm. plays. We've been fortunate right. that they kind of like us, so um, <laughs> they'll come with us. We invite them. You know, we we took them to the play. Um, the, oh, the one at bridge, the Colonial. multicultural bridge. Um, the uh, oh boy, uh, Barrington's drawing a blank. American I'm Sun. embarrassed. Yeah, I know. It was American, Sun. American Sun. It was wonderful. American oh, Sun. American, American Sun. Sun. We're yes. all going to get. I'm um, so excited. I'm so excited for the kids to get to see that. Yeah. I think yeah. that's mm -hmm. going to be a really awesome experience. Yeah, and then do you them. have activities planned for after the they see the play? I hope so. Shirley and I mm -hmm. did it during summer school this yes. year, yeah. which was amazing. Yeah, we went really into was. the classrooms after the kids saw the play the next day, actually, mm -hmm. and the conversations were fantastic. You know, I mm -hmm. thought the kids were really open, and I, I think it really empowered them to be able to speak about their feelings because I think a lot of times they don't get that opportunity, you know, in a positive way, you know, yeah, to share about how they're feeling. I'm wondering too if they have a talk back right after the show with loads of kids in there. Maybe the kids aren't as willing to speak in, in that large of a group setting, and maybe yeah, they're more it, willing to speak uh, in the classrooms. You know, our experience know. from the summer, right. and even even with adults that went to the play, is that it it takes. There is the immediate talk back, which mm -hmm. which uh, Julianne Boyd facilitates right. and moderates and does a wonderful, brilliant job. Mm -hmm. um, but it it takes some time to sort of process what you saw mm -hmm. playing out in that 75 or 80 minutes. And uh, yeah. I think the conversations are ongoing. And, and part of the beauty of having Shirley's, you know, agreeing to, <laughs> to take this position in her mm -hmm. retirement with a small <laughs> R um, yeah. is that, you know, we, we, have, we have now expert resources facilitation and and you know through through both of these folks that if something comes up at a school or a conversation needs to be had at a school that because sometimes it's it's not that we don't want to have the conversation mm -hmm. it's that it's it's hard it's awkward it's it's embarrassing mm -hmm. to to enter into it um, and whether it's over you know the use of of unacceptable language or it's mm -hmm. you know trying to make sense of what happens in the world around us uh, it's it's a tremendous benefit to our students to have you know really expert facilitation at just somebody to say it's okay to talk about this mm -hmm. yeah. you know right. this is this is real and you know and and to to those of you that don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. having the conversation we can help get you there to where you are comfortable mm -hmm. and 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 it's very uh, there's there's a quote that I'm going to you'll see tomorrow night at the school committee meeting but it's it's James Baldwin who you know just a, a key um, you know not only a brilliant writer but a social critic who really mm -hmm. I think still had things to say that resonate today not everything that is faced can be changed but nothing can be changed until it's faced mm. <laughs> and this is yeah. this is a way to help yeah. face um, decades and centuries of, of things that we need to we need to allow students the opportunity to talk about we mm -hmm. we owe it to ourselves to have the conversation mm -hmm. and, and figure yeah. out where we are well, you mentioned that you know no one else has a program quite like this uh, we do know that you know nearly every community deals with the same set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think we fare uh, compared to Berkshire County and, and Massachusetts in general as to dealing with the situation? Well, I'm pretty proud of the fact that our system is taking the lead in the county 
and, and openly having this discussion because it not only helps us in the present, it helps us in the future because we know what the demographic shifts are predicting. So we're preparing for that. We're creating a space that's going to be safe, uh, that's going to be culturally competent and accepting of all people. You know, so that's, in my mindset, that's a great prevention piece for the city. You know, that we're helping to create this space so the people doesn't matter, you know, uh, what, the, what the person's sexual orientation is, what the family socioeconomic situation is, that the educational system will be ready to, um, to receive the, the students. And hopefully, you know, this, I, and I think it is, you know, because I've had conversations with the mayor, so I know it's spilling over into the city you know, to prepare and, and ensure that there's a inclusiveness uh, for, for all that will be um, moving in. And then the, the age change that's coming, you know, I'm, I'm in part of that senior group. So, you know, so, a decade or two from now, you'll be part of that. So, you know, that's diversity too, you know? So it's, it's, uh, it's I think it's an excellent way to, per, to um, enhance our lives now, but clearly to prepare for our future. Right. Right. And Shirley, you, do you also work with the high, work with us in our hiring process and trying to get a more diverse staff into Pittsfield? Yes. Um, yes, I do. Yep. Yeah. And so um, I'm feeling really good. Like, you know, this year we've um, increased the number of uh, um, staff of color. Um, I know we just hired a couple of paras. One was Latino, one was African-American woman. Um, so, yes, I have... Um, I'm a part of the diversity team, so we've reached out to utilizing advertising resources that might uh, reach a, a wider, diverse group of professionals. So, um, and then because of relationships that I have in the community, you know, it's uh, it's been beneficial. Like the NACP, we um, makes sure that they broadcast the vacancies that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of us of, um, share the information that comes from educational system in terms of vacancies. So, yeah. yeah, it's certainly not easy. And I remember when no, Dr. McCandless not. and I were mm -hmm. looking at some of the data, and you're seeing at school. I think Massachusetts schools, fewer people were going into teaching <coughs> ed yeah. in general, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you cut that in half yeah. when you're looking for people of color. Right. And so it's a very difficult task. Mm -hmm. But you know, as you're saying, if people looking at our school district, see what we're doing in the field of cultural competence. Mm -hmm. I mean, that certainly should be a draw, right. should be an, an yeah. attraction. Right. We really appreciate. And uh, through the diversity the committee, um, we had developed a brochure to kind of bring out two job fairs mm -hmm. to kind of talk about the benefits of living in Pittsfield. Sometimes it's hard. There's not mm -hmm. the diversity or there's not people don't always look at the Berkshire County as the up-and-coming place. I think it is. But if you're young and single, sometimes you want to be in New York City oh. or Boston. So I think we did a really nice job with that brochure, um, just kind of the attractions and what we have here that would make people more diversity come, people, you know, come to the Berkshires. Right. Sure. right. If you could explain why it is so important that the workforce is representative of the students that it's mm. serving. That's an excellent question. Do we wanna Well I you know, I there's there's decades of research mm -hmm. that that none none of the research would say, for instance, a black student can only learn mm -hmm. from a black teacher. That that we know is not true. However, um, there is great power in having students see people that look like them sound like them that that you know may have growing up experiences similar to them and and that goes across you know all races and languages and and it just it it on a symbolic level it lets a student know that um, this place is for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think you know as, as the parent of three white children <laughs> two of whom are still in our school system, I want them to have teachers that don't look just like them, that aren't middle class white people. <laughs> and there's and there's research that would that would uh, I was going to say suggest, but it's absolutely does more than suggest. It's true. Students of color need to have educators of color in their lives. Yep. It it will enhance their education. Mm -hmm. um, 
students who are not students of color need educators of color mm -hmm. in their lives mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> as well. Um, because our, our America is, uh, you know, demographically speaking, yeah. um, we are, we are a, a place of all cultures, all races, all religions, and, uh, and only going to be more so. And, and mm -hmm. to have students go through sort of this 12 or 13 year old bubble that is exclusively middle class and white mm -hmm. is just mm -hmm. not preparing them for um, being the leaders and the citizens that we'll need for the next, uh, you know, the next century yeah. in this country. And then when you sometimes talk to uh, our young people who question. have gone it's off to college, twice. they'll talk about their experience being more diverse on the college campus. So it's, I think it's part of our responsibility to prepare our students and not have this cultural True. shock when they go away True. to college and it's like, oh my God, this is the first time I've, mm -hmm. you know, worked mm -hmm. with some from the gay community or, yeah. you know, yeah. a Muslim individual yeah. or a person mm -hmm. of color. So I, I think that that's Start part of our responsibility to provide that experience Whatever. for our uh, students. And I think in terms of the staff, just, it, there's just more richness if there's diversity. Oh, sure. You know, mm -hmm. and there's that being able to uh, ask your peer about, okay, so how do you think I should deal with this situation? This is, this is the language that's being used, or this yep. is what's being said. So having someone there who kind of have that cultural lens is, is, is just a very enriching experience. Thank you. Thank I, wanna, you. I wanna thank oh, you okay. so much for being here. Um, it flew by, we can yeah. ask another 20 questions. I think this was very powerful um, and insightful of the city of our, you know, of, our, of our people, and I think it's just so important. Um, we continue on doing this process, I think it was great. Thank you again for being here. Um, our schools are our future. Uh, we'll rotate host. Yes, we will. <laughs> we hope to see you again, and thank you so much. You're presenting Welcome. why Pittsfield, this is why Pittsfield, this is what makes our community so unique, and it's so special to have people like you doing this very special work. Thank we you. really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.